Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the program. And that's an old-fashioned radio sounder, kind of old-fashioned like me. My name is Stan Houston. This is Interesting Ideas, and I welcome you, many of you, for the first time, because obviously the title of the program has uh, caught a little bit more interest than my usual very nice but rather modest audience because that's exactly what I want to do. I want to have some fun. Uh, Donald Trump uh, announced that he is going to uh, go for three. Uh, he wants to quit on a two to one, two wins, one losses when it comes to being president. And so he's going to go again uh, in the midst of some real difficulties, both in terms of America and in terms of his own performance and his own uh, position in the, the presidential contest. I'm going to assume that uh, perhaps uh, he did a smart thing and uh, he found out about me and I'm a, a longtime business performance coach and he's asked me to coach him. And so uh, with your permission, I'd like to let you listen in to what I would tell uh, Mr. Donald Trump as uh, he is going to now start the run for his presidency. So uh a little fanciful imagination, but maybe it's something that will be practical and useful to you. So uh, that's the program. Interesting ideas. I'm Stan Houston. The program begins right now. Yes, here we go. Now, first of all, you're saying, well, who are you? Uh, well, my name is Stan. I've got a long time career in uh, radio and broadcasting and uh, as a business coach, as a teacher around the world. Uh, I'm nothing terribly unusual, but I've got a little bit of an interesting story. But I've been uh, coaching entrepreneurs uh, for well over 25, 30 years. Many of them are very successful and uh, uh, they're not only not only good friends, uh, clients and people who I've been able with a little touch of wisdom that I have to be able to help them do well in life and business. So I've done that for many years and I've done a number of other things, uh, served as a uh, broadcaster around the world uh, for a, a radio mission organization, uh, was a very good teacher. I can love my teaching time in life. Okay. But uh, the reason I'm also qualified is I think I understand him. I think I understand him perhaps a little bit better than he even understands himself. And that's why it's good to have a coach, because uh, a coach will help you see yourself uh, a little differently from another point of view. And I think I could do that for him. So let's begin. First of all, as a coach, whether I like him or not or would vote for him or not is not the issue. The issue is he's asked me to help him. And uh, that's my job, to help him do better. And uh, that's what I'm going to try and do, because that's what you do when you work for another person. Now, uh, what I'm going to say to him is simply that, yes, I understand you, and uh, let me tell you why I understand you. Okay, first of all, Donald, I didn't know you very well, didn't pay much attention to you. Obviously, I'd heard of you, but... Uh, uh, I saw a little bit of The Apprentice, and uh, you were good. That was a good show. You did well on that. And when you began to run for office, I knew you would have an advantage because of all the other people. You were the only one who really had broadcast savvy. You know, you had actually done radio and television, and you'd done it well. None of the rest of them had ever had any training. They didn't know how to handle the media, and you did. So I knew you'd be formidable because uh, that's good for you. Now, that's also good for you, but it can be a problem. And uh, usually it causes us to have a little bit bigger ego than we need. So uh, please keep in mind, I want you to have a very strong ego because you need it. But I'm going to ask you to see if perhaps uh, you can be a little bit different and reduce the size. Also, Donald, I've read all your books. It's a fascinating story. You know, uh, first of all, I want to commend you. You know what? <laughs> Most of these other people who write books, they have a ghostwriter. Now, you obviously didn't write these books, but they were certainly your ideas. And uh, you gave the name to the person who wrote the book for you. You gave them their name. It was with them. Their name is, and it's pretty big print. Good for you. A lot of these other people, you know, when Hillary writes her book, 
She says, I wrote it. Baloney. Uh, you wrote the book because it was your ideas, and the editor and uh, your colleague actually gave a, a good a tone. You could almost kind of hear you in the writing. And what I discovered, obviously, <laughs> by the way, the fact that you wrote your first best-selling book at the age of 39 was incredible. And that's good. And uh, because, you know, I read all your books so I could understand you. And in effect, I found out that you believe that the deal is great. <laughs> you love doing deals, big deals. That's who you are. You also take risks, big risks. You always have. And uh, you've had failures. <laughs> you've collect well, like every entrepreneur. <laughs> As one of my entrepreneurial friends said, I've started many, many businesses, and most of them failed, but thank goodness the three that succeeded, succeeded well. Well, that's a little bit of your story. So I found that out about you. I also found out that you are you were raised to be a tough guy. Yeah, I can tell. You know, your dad uh, was in the, he, he was he was a millionaire, but he wasn't the kind of millionaire you were, was he? No, he actually was doing a rental property, you know. And uh, the story where you told us where you actually uh, had to go out and help collect rent, and it was dangerous. And the guy who taught you how to collect the rent, these people didn't write checks. They didn't have checking accounts. You knocked on the door, and you asked them to pay you, usually in cash. And then he taught you that as soon as you knock, stand back behind the stoop things. Get out of that, because in just in case they start knowing that the rent collector is there and they start shooting through the door, you're okay, because you jump to the side just in case. <laughs> was a tough way to make a living, and your dad made you do it. And he was a tough guy, and he was going to make you tough, too. And that was helpful, because obviously, being in New York City, <laughs> in your business, you had to deal with crooked politicians who always were out to get you. You had tough, tough construction and labor unions, and you had to kind of deal with the bosses, but you were really good at working with the guys who actually did the work. You liked them. You kind of hang around them. You made sure that you got good work done, and you learned a lot about construction yourself, but you had to deal with the tough union guys. And, of course, then you had to deal with the mafia, the mobs all around. So uh, I recommend that's why I understood you. that line you used in the book. When I heard you in a speech sometime, you said, hey, <laughs> I never have gotten anything I wanted without a fight. I had to get a fight for I had to fight for everything I wanted. And so um, that's your deal. And I understand that. And now um, you had a success and you had a failure. Let's see if we can make it a little bit better. Here's what I want you to do. I want you, first of all, to be different than you were. Start creating a little mystery. Uh, you did a good job. Uh, that was well spoken. You were talking about them. Uh, you need to start creating a little bit more mystery. Everybody has an opinion of you, one way or the other. Start breaking with your image in some ways. What's he going to do now? Where? Be a little bit of a different Trump. Uh, that kind of catches people by surprise. Just, you know. You've changed in the two years since your election and your so intersliced non-selection, you know. So what has happened? Change, put some mystery into your life. A little bit of mystery with authenticity is great power. I teach that all the time. Uh, that's good because sometimes it keeps people guessing. Like the reason Putin didn't <laughs> attack while you were in president because he didn't quite know what you would do. You, know, you just might surprise him by going after him, and he didn't want that. So it's good to create mystery, but not too much. Just enough to keep people a little bit off balance, but at the same time know that there's something about you that is growing in terms of trust and confidence and goodness. Uh, that there's not the touch of anger or the touch of toughness quite there. Be a little bit different. Smile in ways that I know things that you don't know, because you do. 
but create a mystery. That's very important. Um, buy a theme song. That's right. That's important to get a theme song. So uh, whenever you speak, have a theme song. You know, you know, like Rocky or uh, YMCA, but make it your own and uh, make it such that people can sing along with it. Maybe you actually want to get a performer to actually write a song for you that you can actually use. It will be your song. This is, you know, this is this is Don's song. And it's upbeat. It's inspiring. It's not neat, mean or nasty or negative. It simply is fun and encouraging and hopeful. Remember, you're in the business of not selling hotels anymore. You're in the business of selling hope. And you know that. So just keep that in mind. All right? Um, so buy a theme song. Also, remember, I'm with you was good. Keep doing that. <laughs> that time when Hillary had that, hey, I'm with her. You knocked it out of the park when you said, I'm not with her. I'm with you. You matter. And that will be your appeal. Don't lose that. I'm with you. I remember that time when, I don't know what program it was, but people were calling in about you shortly after you were elected and why they voted for you. And this one woman said, I don't know if I always like him or what he does, says or what he does, but you know what? Donald Trump loves America and he loves us. And that's why. That's what you want to cultivate. That's what you want to cultivate. I'm with you. I'm on your side. I'm for you. You know, here, you, your opponent closes down the oil fields and the pipelines. How did that help the American people? He opens up the border. How did that help the American people? I'm with you. I'm on your side. I'm with you. And just talk about how you sympathize, empathize, and how you plan to help people. That should be what you do. Now, this is going to be hard for you, Don. Ignore the competition. Just ignore them. Uh, you're the first one in. Now, everybody who's going to join in, both Republican or Democrat, now they'll start jumping in. In fact, Chris Christie made a kind of a nasty comment right away. Just ignore Chris Christie. He, he doesn't count. He doesn't matter. They, none of them should matter to how you do your work. Don't even mention their name. Don't say anything nasty about them. Don't give them any nicknames. Don't even mention uh, them at all. Don't talk about them. It's you and the people who you want to trust you and hire you and buy you. And you know that. You're a salesman. You know that. Do that. You don't need to attack the competition. You don't, in your hotel business, you don't go around telling people how bad Hilton was. <laughs> no, you talk about how good the Trump Towers are. Do that. So just leave them alone. Don't mention them. Ignore them. Don't be nasty to them. One exception. If a woman joins the presidential campaign, like, you know, maybe Nikki Haley or uh, Christy Noem, some of the great women that eventually will be, welcome them. Welcome them. Say nice things about them. Say nothing but nice things about them. Be a gentleman. Don't say anything bad about them. In fact, you might even smile and say, you know, she'll make a great president someday. <laughs> Oh, that's the thing that you'll be different. All right? You got that? I know that's hard because you're used to, and it had to work for you in New York. They hit you, you hit them back twice as hard, and you had to do that to survive in New York City. But that's this isn't New York City. This is America. And most of America is different from New York City. Remember that, okay? Uh, be more Florida and less New York. And after you, you move there anyhow, so people in Florida are friendly. Be a Floridian. All right? You got that? Thank you. I would appreciate that. Um, I also want you to actually make your uh, 
things a show. Now you're a showman. <laughs> no more 90 minute speeches. No more 50 minute speeches. Make them no more than an hour and a half. And it's a show. People come there and there's music playing. And then there's not only music playing, but then there are some singers and performers and some, you know, warm up people. You know that. Just make it good time, family time, you know. Um, make it a patriotic time, you know. Make sure the flag is present, you know. Begin with the national anthem, you know. Sing God Bless America. Start the show. But don't start the show with you there. Let other people be on stage. And then when it's all done, the lights come down and then you make your first appearance. And you come to the platform and you do nothing but say, I'm Donald Trump. Let me tell you a story. Just that. I'm Donald Trump. Let me tell you a story. And tell a story. Limit it. 20 minutes. It's like a TED talk. 20 to 25 minutes. Tell the band, if after 25 minutes I haven't shut up, start playing the music, so I'll be able to know that I should shut up. You know, they don't need, they don't need to hear you talk for any longer than 25 minutes. That's good enough. If you can't say it in 25 minutes, save it for the next time. But uh, do it that way. All right? Do a lot of... Again, remember when. Again, leave the competition. Don't mention them. Remember when. <laughs> remember the day before uh, Donald Trump was defeated by Joe Biden. Gasoline was a dollar eighty a gallon. The very next day after he was elected, it was a dollar eighty-seven. And it kept going up until he became president, and then it went way up. Remember when there was dollar eighty gas? And then just keep doing. You did this a little bit. Remember when? Remember when? Remember when? And just without bragging about what you did, just remember when? Remember when? Remember when? Um. Don't attack Biden personally. Don't say anything about his personal issues. We all know them. The man has problems, both physically, perhaps mentally. Uh, we all know that. Don't go there. You don't need to. He's, he's doing his own stuff on that. Uh, and if you do, just kind of do the old Ronald Reagan thing. Remember? When Ronald Reagan was forced, <laughs> he was 71, and they were talking about him being perhaps too old. Uh, and that was an issue. And when the time a reporter asked, you, you know this story, Don, of course you remember it. Uh, <laughs> they asked him a question about his age, you know, and then he started off with a smile and said, I promise you in this campaign, I will never, never, ever make age an issue. I will never hold my opponent's youth and inexperience against him. <laughs> Walter Mondale was there. Even he started to laugh, and the audience, you know, just burst out laughing. Except it was kind of a hard laugh for Mondale because he knew he had lost the release. He had lost the election right there, right that night. You know, and his favorite line was when somebody would criticize him or something like that or say something nasty again, he would say, there you go again. <laughs> Do that kind of thing. Just when something is said in debate or something else against you, be able to criticize or make fun of, criticize, make fun of gently their ideas. Defund the police. <laughs> Are you kidding? <laughs> there you go again. Do that kind of thing with those issues. You should tell people what your hope and vision is and what you're going to do. And in effect, when the critiques and the other things are pointed out, uh, you just simply, you know, listen attentively and then with a smile say, there you go again. There you go again. And 
make your statement and let it go. All right. Tell stories of great people. Yeah, people. Every program have three, two or three little two or three minute vignettes of just ordinary Americans who've done some extraordinary things. Little two minute video shot. Ladies and gentlemen, remember this is about you and your country. And I want to introduce you to some of the people who are making America great right now, whether I win or not. Little vignette, little vignette, little vignette of just a simple act of goodness and kindness done by people in their community. And then uh, after them over and say, and by the way, they're right here today, and let's welcome them. And everyone stands. Every program have the truly great people in America who are, are that and little picture show and a little affirmation. That would be great. Tell stories of great people, ordinary great people. Then uh, here you go. This is going to be different for you. Always close with a benediction. That's right. Uh, and forget this God bless America thing. Everybody does that. Be different. Hey, you say you're a man of faith. A lot of your people are. Why don't you close with a prayer? You know, why don't you literally have a small prayer? Go ahead. By the way, if you don't know how, uh, it's about time you learned, and I'll, I'll teach you how to pray. I pray all the time, so I'm pretty good at it. I've done it for years. Doing it even more now as I get old, like you. You also need to pray a lot more when you get older. Keep you from doing stupid things. As I said, dear Lord, don't let me die stupid. That's one of my constant prayers. And you need to pray that too. If you don't know how, I'll write some up for you. And then, as I said, I'll, I'll teach you how to do some on your own. And as I said, if you don't know how, it's about time you learned. All right? Do that. Close with a benediction. Remember Star Trek? Then a benediction is not just an ending to the church service. You know, oh, good. <laughs> that means it's done. We can leave. No, it means benediction. Bena, good speech. Remember Spock? Live long and prosper. That's a benediction. Um, thank people. I'm grateful that you came. You mean a lot to me. Uh, I want to bless you. I want to help good things come to you. And uh, I'd like to just close in prayer for you and even uh, our opponents and for our country. Just shortly, just do it. And then say amen. And uh, the band starts playing, and you gently walk off. Don't make a show of it. Just walk off telling people that you're grateful they were there. And then let them mix. Let them party afterwards in getting to meet and know each other and talk about it. And that's what you should be doing all the time. At the same time, uh, if you are asked to do an interview, do this. Say, no, I will not interview you. You will not interview me. We will have a conversation. So you can ask me questions and I will answer them. And I will ask you questions and you will answer them. And I'll ask you a lot of questions that you have to answer. And you can see, they have to reveal their prejudices, their biases. They have to answer questions. No interviews. But if you have the courage of a conversation, we'll have a conversation. You ask questions. We have conversations. Uh, I'll answer them. I'll ask you questions. You answer them. And uh, that's what you do. That's what you do, and you do it well. There we go, folks. <laughs> That's uh, That would be my 25 minutes uh, to Donald Trump. And you know what? I think if he would do that, he'll probably win. If he does that, he'll probably win. Hey, thank you for your time. I'm grateful. Uh, I'm grateful, you know, as I oftentimes say, you know, all of you are now 25 minutes closer to being dead. 
and you gave me that time. <laughs> I'm very grateful. Thank you very much. Uh, if you'll give me a time for a little self-promotion, kind of, I'll tell you why I can do what you just heard me do. I'm staying used to that. These were interesting ideas, and uh, these were my ideas, my performance coaching ideas for uh, Donald J. Trump. Well, I wonder uh, what will happen. Hey, uh, just what I did for Don, I can do for you. I can help you. Uh, I'm a teacher. I'm a broadcaster. I'm a slightly overeducated disc jockey. And I've done lots of things that help people. But I'm a simple man. Uh, really am. <laughs> Bill O'Reilly used to say he's a simple man, and he wasn't. But I kind of am. <laughs> All right? And so... Uh, I would be grateful if you'd give me the opportunity, perhaps, to uh, help you in your life and in your business. And I'm also a radio guy. You need to learn how to be on the radio. That's the very same thing that Trump knew. You have to know how to do radio. You have to know how to do television. You have to know how to do an interview. You have to have media savvy if you want to be a leader in the world today. And uh, I can help you do that because... That's what I do, and I do it quite well. I really do. Not the greatest, but I do it well. I'm pretty good at it, and I can help you. So reach out to me uh, in any way possible. Once again, stanhousted at gmail.com. stanhousted at gmail.com. Best and blessings to you. Um, Till next time, by God's good grace, that'll be tomorrow. And uh, we'll talk to you then. Bye for now. Thank you.